We made it. How many emails have we exchanged? But finally, here we are. Welcome to the live stream of Ben Cedron from the DNA Studios in Madison, Wisconsin. My name is Lou and I'm the host of Mondo Jazz, a weekly radio show dedicated to international jazz, which airs every Wednesday night on Radio Free Brooklyn and is also on All About Jazz. Until February, we had an intimate and cozy concert series at the Rizzoli Bookstore on Broadway here in New York the Rizzoli Music Aperitivo, where amazing musicians and devoted music fans gathered on Sunday afternoons, surrounded by an ocean of books for great live music and a glass of chilled Prosecco on the house. For March, we had in store a whole weekend dedicated to Ben Sidron for, for a book launch of his uh, biography of the celebrated producer Tommy Lipuma, which was going to be moderated by journalist Ashley Khan. And we also had in store a concert with Leo Sidran on drums and Lauren Cohen on bass. Then COVID put everything on pause, but we kept looking for ways to make that Ben Sidran event happen somehow. Initially, we were thinking of postponing it to May, which in hindsight shows that we had no idea of where we were heading. Now the bookstore has opened again, and if you are in the area, please stop by. It's as gorgeous and well stocked as always, but uh, for the time being, we cannot resume the concert series. So here we are uh, with this online event, which shows, however, that uh, Zoom does not necessarily mean boring work meetings, but also live music, which gives an opportunity to bring together Ben Sidron fans from all over the world, at least that part of the world that is not asleep. The fans in California are probably watching it over breakfast, the ones in Germany after dinner, and the ones in between at different moments of their day, but we are all together in a way that is impossible for in-person concerts. As uh, someone put it, speaking about music is like dancing about architecture. So I will not try to summarize in a few words, uh, a few words all that Ben Sidron means to the music world. Plus, during the email exchanges that uh, I've had with all of you, I've come to realize that 90% of you are longtime Ben Sidron fans and know his music very well. At a personal level, this event is very special to me as Ben has been one of my music heroes. I've learned English because I wanted to be able to read his book entitled Black Talk. I ordered it from a little bookstore in Parma, Italy, where I used to live back in the late 80s. It was before the internet, so it took six weeks to get it shipped from the US publisher, Da Capo Press. And then it took me months to read because I had to look up every second word in the dictionary. But now I'm able to speak to you in English, thanks to that also. And then I fell in love with his music and uh, with his other books, especially There Was a Fire, which I would get so lost into that I would often miss subway stops and be late for various appointments. And for all these reasons, I could not think of a better way to restart the Rizzoli Music Aperitivo concert series. It is online and we can definitely make it feel as a very communal experience. And this is a, like a virtual house concert is only open to you. Plus Zoom has a chat function that you can find at the bottom of the screen and you can use it to say hi and where you're watching from. And also feel free to use it to cheer or applaud virtually, of course. To ensure optimal sound quality, please keep your microphones off during the whole concert. And then later in the show, Ben will connect with his son, Leo, to wax, po to wax poetics. And if you have any questions, post them in the chat and uh, time permitting, Ben and Leo will answer them. As you know, Ben is using this event also to support the jazz scene in New York City, which is in a dire state due to the social distancing requirements which are in place. Uh, he will donate a portion of the proceeds to the legendary club Smalls. So thank you to those that were or will be in a position to contribute to that cause. I'm not sure, but I presume that nobody among the more than 100 fans that uh, are watching from all over the world were at Ben Sidron's first ever gig. After today, you will be able to say that you were at his first ever live streamed concert. And now without further ado, let's get to the music. But let's start with a video of Who's the Old Guy Now, Ben Sidron's single from his forthcoming EP, which he will release in November. 
And then, live from Madison, Wisconsin, at the DNA studios of engineer Mark Whitcomb, Bansy Drum Live. Sit back, enjoy the music, sing along, dance, or have a great time, however you prefer it, and most importantly, be well. Thank you, and see you soon. When I was a young man Just getting started I didn't even have me A ride in the town I asked my heroes Out on the corner I said, now brother Where'd you get that sound? And one by one The old men told me About what they'd done And sometimes how Well, step on up Take yourself a number Yeah, and take a look At who's the old guy now about back in the old days just getting started I didn't even have me a story to tell <laughs> now that I'm older I got my own story but it's the way how I tell it Make the damn thing sell Make it sell I've been looking back At all my adventures And I'm getting to wondering If there's a point somehow I'm looking for answers Coming up with nothing but questions We'll take a look At who's the old guy now 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 <laughs> Who's the old guy now Before Lord God made the sea and the land He held all the stars in the palm of his hand And they ran through his fingers like grains of sand And then one little star fell alone And then Lord God hunted through the wide night air For the little dark star on the wind down there and he stated a promise he'd take special care so it didn't get lost again now man don't mind if the stars grow dim and the clouds blow over and cover him long as Lord God's watching over him 
keeping track of how it all goes on. Now I've been walking through the night and day till my eyes get weary and my hair turns gray. And sometimes it seems maybe God's gone away, forgetting the promise we heard him say. And we're lost out here in the stars, the little stars, the big stars blowing through the wind. We're lost out here in the stars. Well, that's the Alpha and the Omega. Who's the old guy now? And we're lost out here in the stars. Welcome uh, to the 2020, wow, 2020 version of the Salon for uh, secular humanists, arch democrats, and uh, free thinkers. Many of you know I've been doing this uh, in Madison for several years. Uh, but we're here now coming to you from the swing state of Wisconsin. We're proud of that. We're proud of the swing state of Wisconsin. It's not only a political fact, but a cosmic direction. Once again, I am reminded uh, of what that great philosopher Johnny Griffin once said. He said, jazz is music for people made by and for people who have chosen to feel good in spite of conditions, who have chosen. You can't affect what happens to you, but you can decide how you respond to it, as you did, because by res your response, we're hanging out here together. And I'm feeling good about that coming together. I, it's weird. It's, I got to say, it's weird here. Uh, there are more things plugged in in this room than I've ever seen plugged in anywhere, uh, but yet it appears it, it, it's working. And uh, I'm enjoying uh, growing old, older. I trust you are too, because uh, it's the goal now. It used to be the problem. Now it's the solution. As they say, stay positive, test negative. Um, man. <laughs> Money's getting cheaper, price is getting steeper. Found a woman, but I couldn't keep her. You see, times are getting tougher than tough. Things are getting rougher than rough. I make a lot of money, but I just keep spending the stuff. They got pork chops at the market. I asked the butcher for a pound. I couldn't buy a pork chop when I put my money down. Time's getting tougher than tough. Things are getting rougher than rough. I make a lot of money, but I just keep spending that stuff. Telling folks, cut down on your meat. Why don't they cut the prices and just let the people eat? You see, times are getting tougher than tough. Things are getting rougher than rough. I make a lot of money, but I just keep spending that stuff. You can't afford to live, you better try. Undertaker's got a union and it costs too much to die. Times get tougher than tough. Things are getting rougher than rough. I make a lot of money, but I keep spending. I make a lot of money, I keep on spending. I make a whole lot of money, but I keep on spending the stuff. So uh, that's just one of the, 
the many songs we're going to do today here that hopefully uh, capture the, uh, the world we're living in. Whatever happened to real life, this is what we got. We're in this movie. Uh, and it's rough out here. How rough? Well, I found this from uh, writer Lori Moore in this week's New Yorker. And um, it's, it's not what she says that's so hip, but what she doesn't say. And, and more to the point, the way she doesn't say it. Um, anyway, here's her description of life <laughs> out here on planet Earth these days. Who wanted to share the banalities of this life right now? The low buzz of dread in the head like a broken wire? The endless YouTube links? Everyone frantically not socializing? The recently furloughed male friends doing their insane air guitar concerts on Zoom? The hours of television news interspersed with highly theatrical, mind-boggling insurance ads? The early morning senior mixer at the supermarket? The neighborhood walks with face masks hanging from one ear like dream catchers. Women created email threads of their readings of the Bible. It was all ghastly, especially the singing happy birthday twice as you washed your hands because it might never actually be your, your, be your birthday again, so have at it. The shuttered theaters and museums made the gloom of cities everywhere a harrowing one. Photos of empty boulevards and squares flooded the internet. Pierced ears filled back in. Because who wore earrings anymore? Uh, Lori Moore. Well, as always, humor is the only thing that's going to get us through this particular uh, experience. Uh, it's the only thing that's going to defeat uh, the bad guys, humor. Mel Brooks knew this, right? You laugh at him, it kills him. Uh, it's part of the process we're going through, and uh, we're not the only one who's gone through it, because, speaking of humor, it's not really funny. Actually, it's not funny at all, but it's kind of lighthearted, because Albert Camus said of Sisyphus pushing the rock up the hill, which is pretty much what we're doing out here these days, pushing this rock up the hill. Uh, he said, you got to picture him happy. There's a man and a rock and a real steep hill. The sun is so hot, even the shadows can kill. He keeps on pushing, trying to get to the top. But the forces of nature try to make a man drop. He's down on his knees in a world full of pain. But time after time, he gets back up again. You got the picture. You got to picture him happy. Truth, and there ain't no place to hide The rock is time passing And time will abide The hill is the shape Of all things to come And the man, he's just suffering In the heat and the sun Trying to find some meaning In a world that don't care But the rock won't talk And the hill don't share You got the picture You got the picture him happy It's the way that you do it It ain't where you go It's the way you go through it These are desperate times They call for desperate actions Desperate minds They need desperate distractions You see, the sun is so hot You can't even breathe the air And it's an eye for an eye And everything is fair Try to find a reason in a world where there's none, there's just this rock and this hill and this god-awful sun. Now there's a change for a dollar, there's a change for a dime. You want to change your life, you got to change your mind. You got the 
picture you got to picture him happy the way that you do it and it ain't where you go it's the way you go through it desperate times call for desperate actions desperate minds they need desperate distractions you see the sun is so hot you can't even breathe the air and it's an eye for an eye and everything is fair try to find a reason in the world where there's none there's just this rock and this hill and this god-awful sun but when you get to the top you'll see a terrible thrill you'll see another man another rock going up another hill you got the picture you gotta picture him happy Now, if we did this properly, this would be a fade out of infinite length. <laughs> you got to picture him happy. Hey, in spite of conditions, that's what Johnny Griffin said. It's crazy. Hey, I'll tell you a little story about my mother in law. Uh, she's 93 years old. She lives alone, literally, never goes out of the house. Nobody ever comes in. The other day she asked me how often she should wash her hands. I said, well, whatever's normal, why? She said, because her hands are really getting chapped. Turns out she's been watching them, washing them every half hour. She also watches Fox News, and I think there could be a connection between the chapped hands and Fox News. So we are what we watch. Everybody's getting nostalgic for the old days before all this went south, when there was real life. Uh, I myself am not, because these are the old days. That's how I feel. But in any case, musicians in particular are having a hard time out here. Uh, and they're openly longing for the old days when there was also no work, uh, no money, and no music business. That seems better than today, because... Now, even the government, the government has declared that being a musician is not a legitimate business. Dig this. This also from the New Yorker. Same issue that I found that Lori Moore piece. Uh, bear with me. Ah, here we go. Those of you who have seen me in gigs, know that I generally have pieces of paper flying everywhere. See, this is my style of organization. You know, if you have enough papers, what could possibly go wrong? Okay, from the New Yorker. Venus DeMars, lead singer of the group All the Pretty Horses. She had her accountant deduct business expenses, such as money that had gone into touring and performance. She was audited by the government because according to her income, there was a question whether she was indeed an artist. The state tax authorities found her claim dubious. In their view, somebody putting most of her money into an endeavor that produced very little return couldn't possibly be doing work. Her deductions were therefore illegitimate. She was told that uh, she owed nearly $3,600 in back taxes. Her legal fight took a year and a half and cost around $12,000. So if you're a, a musician, particularly a jazz mu musician, and naturally you, you have to uh, save up to be a jazz musician, you just can't go out there, uh, you may not be in a legitimate business. Uh, and in fact, I think it's pretty clear uh, you're not in a legitimate business. But while we speak about legitimate businesses, 
I want to mention uh, uh, what Luigi said at the top. We are here uh, to support and raise money uh, for Smalls Live. Smalls is a great little jazz club in New York. Uh, let's let it stand in for all the great little jazz clubs around the world. Uh, it's ground zero for jazz in New York. And it's trying to keep the music and the musicians alive uh, by streaming some of the most burning jazz on the planet. And you can go there, there are thousands of, of shows. It's really uplifting and, and for the whole jazz community. Uh, and you can tune them in uh, and, and support them here. It uh, may not be a legitimate business, but uh, it'll get you through the night. Don't cry for no hipster He knew what he signed up for The look and the feel That run-down appeal The passing ship, the distant shore No, don't cry for no hipster He saw the writing on the wall Gave him hope Just another slippery slope A deeper truth he can recall Ah, but when young becomes old Cool turns to cold That's when we'll see If the truth set him free Till then don't cry for no hipster He's got his hat, he's got his cane And in a world so square With disasters everywhere If you can't laugh at life, you're through Ah, but if you have to cry say I'm tired of being so hip he says it's like waiting for a ship a ship that won't never come in ah but check out his grin don't cry for him don't cry for no hipster he had his day he had his night let's just call it what it is in a life like his it's usually wrongs that make it right 
Oh, but if you have to cry, if you have to cry, then make it tears of joy because he's here and then he's gone. And gone is one thing he can do. Don't cry for no hipster. Don't cry for no hipster. He's got his hat, he's got his cane. Uh, that song, I, I wrote it uh, partly for myself, partly for you. And matter of fact, I've dedicated it to a bunch of you over the, uh, over the years in clubs around the world. Uh, but part of it was definitely written uh, from my uh, late friend, Tommy LaPuma. The image of he's got his hat and he's got his cane. That was Tommy. Tommy always had a cane because he had one leg shorter than the other. Tommy was an amazing, amazing uh, record producer, friend to musicians, uh, uh, the most successful record jazz record producer of the 20th century. Uh, and the book I wrote about him, called The Ballad of Tommy LaPuma, that's this one, is what started this whole process. The reason we're sitting here today is because we were going to do this book reading about this. Uh, I've got two uh, things I could read that I, I've thought about maybe reading. Hey, to do a book reading, right? Uh, one is long, one is short. The long one is a description of Tommy LaPuma and Bob Krasnow, his partner in a company called Blue Thumb Records. I signed to Blue Thumb Records in 1972, and that's how I met these characters. It's about a trip they took to Las Vegas. And the other, the shorter one is about... Uh, the last time Tommy saw Miles Davis. Let me see how long it takes to read this. Maybe we'll be here for a while. This is an example of um, what, what Blue Thumb Records was like. It seems preposterous now. But back then, you know, it was kind of, this was 19, uh, this event uh, refers to probably 1968, 1969, when it was a time of excess. Everything was excessive, and everything was possible, and nobody had been there before. It, it was, everything was new. I mean, given the world we're in today, it's probably a good idea to remember what it was like then, because everything that's old is new again, right? Here we go. Here's a simple, single example of what it was like with Bob Krasnow and Tommy LaPuma and Blue Thumb Records. One day, for no apparent reason, Krasnow decided they should go to Las Vegas. He and Tommy jumped on a plane and arrived at the Riviera Hotel a couple of hours later. They checked into a suite, and before they even unpacked, Bob pulled out some window pane acid, these little squares that felt like plastic, but when you put them under your tongue, they dissolved. He poured this stuff out on the table, and the two of them started wetting their fingers and picking it up. And naturally, they were picking up more than one at a time, so there was no telling how much acid they actually ingested. After a little while, when it still felt like nothing much was happening, they were confident enough to go out for dinner. Somebody had told them about a great seafood restaurant at the Desert Inn called the Aegean of the Sea. They had made a reservation there before they dropped the acid, so they got in the elevator and went down to the casino level. When they got into the elevator, everything seemed normal. But by the time the doors opened onto the casino floor, it was like the scene in Fear and Loathing, in which outrageously horrible designs in the carpet turned into dragons, and Hunter Thompson and his attorney are strangers in a strange land. They just kept walking. But by the time they got to the cab stand, they were absolutely flying. They asked the driver to take them to the Desert Inn, and at the hotel they made their way to the Aegean of the Sea restaurant. It was a cavernous, multi-tiered space with seating on several levels, and the maitre d' started to lead them around the top tier to get to their table. The place had what looked like aquariums built into the walls, but up close, these turned out to be curved plastic panels with fish painted on them and moving lights behind them to make it look as if the fish were swimming. Nothing was what it appeared to be. It felt like they had been walking through this bizarre landscape forever. And way down at the bottom of the room, many levels below, there appeared to be a large pond in the shape of a figure eight. And floating in this pond was a large white wooden swan with a harp on it. At the time, Bob had an outrageous Jufro and was also wearing a large crucifix around his neck. So he and Tommy were getting a lot of looks. 
Then, just as they finally got seated, a woman in a strapless evening gown mounted the swan, sat down behind the harp, hit a switch, and the swan took off, swimming around the figure eight pool while she started playing Smoke Gets in Your Eyes on the harp. For some reason, that just did it for Bob and Tommy. We just lost it, says Tommy. We were practically on our knees laughing and pointing at this tableau, and of course, the maitre d' was looking at us like we were out of our minds, which, of course, we were. Uh, and that's how the record business started. Actually, Art Blakey once said, jazz was invented when somebody goofed. That's how jazz got invented. Because in jazz, the idea is not to do it perfectly, but how do you recover from what you perceive to be your mistakes? You didn't intend something, but you did it. So how do you contextualize that so it makes sense? And as we say, what you stumble on is always better than what you're looking for, right? Uh, here's the thing about Miles Davis, just uh, days before he passed away. The last time Tommy saw Miles was when Miles was in the hospital, not long before he died. He called me up and said, Tommy, I got something I want to play for you, says Tommy. I went to see him, and he was in this bed with all kinds of stuff around him, tapes and drawing materials. He put in this cassette of something he had been working on. When it was over, Tommy said, yeah, Miles, that's nice. I think maybe you could. And Miles interrupted him right there. He said, man, I don't want to know what you think about it. I just wanted to play it for you. I love that. OK. So that's uh, the Tommy LaPuma book that uh, we were going to read at Rizzoli's uh, last March. But here we are. Uh, next case, as my man Tommy would say. Oh, I did the pitch for Rizzoli's already. Uh, okay. How y'all doing? Having a drink? Cooled out? Man, I can see so many of you in my mind. What a trip, huh? Um, Believable. You know, actually, Tommy LaPuma reminded me a little bit of Mose Allison. This is curious. They were nothing alike, the two of them. Uh, you know, Mose grew up in Tippo, Mississippi, uh, Tommy in, in uh, Cleveland, Ohio. But they were both such down cats. I mean, root level, from the nub, as Dizzy Gillespie would say. And they were both really funny cats. They never met but they would have loved each other. They had that foxhole, foxhole sense of humor. Now if life is driving you to drink, and you sitting there wondering what you should think, got some consolation for you I'll give it to you if I might I don't worry about a thing because I know nothing's gonna be all right you see this world is just one big trouble spot because some folks have plenty and some folks have not there's always gonna be somebody playing with dynamite. I don't worry about a thing. Ain't nothing gonna be all right.
waste your time trying to be a go-getter. Things are gonna get worse before they get any better. You know, I used to be trouble. Yeah, and then I finally found the light. I don't worry about a thing. Ain't nothing gonna be all right. Obviously, that was Mose Allison's song, I Don't Worry About a Thing. Mose, in a conversation I had with him once, referred to people as sentient meat. We can't stop thinking. So let's talk about the elephants in the room right now. This is my favorite part of the gig. Uh, let's talk about time and space, you know. Time has gotten funny, right? I mean, there's no question about it. It goes fast, it goes slow, it's rushing, it's dragging used to be swinging. Now it's pretty hard to buy a groove. It's tough to find a groove. Although that's not entirely true. I don't know if you saw uh, Joe Farnsworth playing on the corner in New Jersey, but that, that was on fire. But here's the thing. We don't move through time. Time moves through us. That's established. Now space. Space is something else. Space is all vibrations. You know, string theory, quantum mechanics, like that. Everything reduces down to vibration. Sound is just vibration in the audible spectrum. There's no question that music came before speech, and there's even speculation that music came from the birds, that birds are actually improvising and have signature sounds, which, of course, is a definition of jazz. And, of course, the birds came from dinosaurs, so you see, it's a very, very twisted path we are on. It started a very long time ago, maybe 150,000 years ago, somewhere in the Rift Valley of Africa. That's the Rift Valley, not the Rift Valley. That was Kansas City in the 30s. I'm talking about the Rift Valley. That's where we all come from. The same mother, one woman, the mother of us all. So everybody on the planet today is literally related. We are cousins, united in the groove through this one woman. Now, as you know, in those caves in the south of France 40,000 years ago, they not only found paintings on the walls, but they found musical instruments, flutes, yeah, art. Art was life, not something added on, but at the heart of the human experience. Now imagine what the acoustics of those caves must have been like. In the dark, smoky fires blazing, people tranced out on some local weed, and painting on, on the walls pictures of bisons, their hands. I mean, what kind of transcendence was that? That's where we come from. Music is a big part of that miracle. How amazing that people discovered music, or maybe, music discovered people, you know, like they say, dogs civilized humans instead of the other way around. <laughs> well, maybe music and art made homo sapiens that much more creative when it all came down. When it came to survival, well, they survived while the Neanderthals did not. Creativity is survival strategy. And I bring that up because today, today, creativity is under attack, and the fact that we are here today is a sign that we have determined to stay human. Music may literally be survival for us. Art is not the frosting. Art is not the cake. Art is the appetite for life. That's right. Ouch. Well, next time, hopefully, we'll get to Schrodinger's cat, Wittgenstein's duck rabbit, and possibly Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Uncertainty principle. Are we in the box or not? Are we somewhere or are we nowhere? It's time to ask the big questions to my friend Leo. Leo, can you hear me? Are you there? I'm here. Are you there? I'm right here. Okay. Where, where, uh, where, where is right here? Because 
on the internet, the internet is everywhere and nowhere at the same time. So w where are you? That's where I am. That's exactly where I am. I'm everywhere <laughs> and I'm nowhere at the same time. I have to tell you, I think you're doing a great yeah. job. Uh, and I, I've been Thank you. Really? fighting with the Zoom the whole time, man. I, you know, this is probably the most stress I've had in seven months is trying to get this Zoom thing to work. It's amazing. And it gives me an enormous amount of respect for my nine-year-old daughter who has mastered the art of Zoom and Zooming in, uh, yes. <laughs> in these COVID. So, so it's, it's, I can't hear you. While Ben, can you, can you give me a thumbs up if, if Ben is frozen for you too? Is Ben frozen for you? Yeah, Ben's frozen. Here, here's the deal. Uh, as, <laughs> as Joe Biden would say, um, I do want to take a second while Ben is coming back from his video freezing to once again, thank Lou from Mondo Jazz and All About Jazz and the folks at Rizzoli for putting this together, because the fact is, without them, we wouldn't be here. We were uh, going to spend a weekend at Rizzoli Bookstore in March, as Ben mentioned. And uh, when that fell apart, we kind of kept the door open to trying to do something throughout all of these uh, months. And it was Luigi who brought this back to our uh, attention uh, about a month ago and said, well, what if we did something remotely? I don't think we had any idea how many people would be excited about joining us here. And I don't think we had any sense of the generosity and the enthusiasm that we would find from people to support Smalls Jazz Club, which is really a wonderful place. And it's the heart of a community in New York that is on so many levels underground right now. They have been keeping the flame lit through all of this uh, time, putting on concerts, a, a concert every day, and putting a little bit of uh, walking around money in the pockets of the jazz musicians in, in uh, New York, but also um, making sure that that community doesn't fall apart, because without community, the music doesn't really mean anything. So uh, I'm just talking here, Ben, hoping that you'll... Uh, you'll come back to life. Are you with us? Well, I am. I am with you. And uh, I love hearing you talk like that. You're, you're so coherent. And as I said before, I'm the old guy now. And I'm, I'm just I'm just on cruise control out here, not just on this thing, but in life. <laughs> I'm just uh, coming up to uh, the stop signs and rolling through them. You know what I'm saying? It's it's almost like uh, being in my own uh, movie and yet the director didn't show up. I, I don't know what to, what, what to say. But I, I, do, I do actually have something I'd like to say. It, it goes like this. Take a little hit just before you quit. Take a little poke, then you get the joke. You don't want to buy it before you try it. Life's too short to make the same mistake twice, so take a little hit before you commit the old routine. Stop and dig the scene. Your body and your mind, they are beautifully designed. You don't want to max out the old potential for dropping that torrential rain on your parade. You want to play it where it's laid. Why don't you take a little hit before you Never here, 
but sorrow is ever near. You don't want to cancel the old connection to cosmic introspection. Well, we've been chewing on the leaves and brewing up the seeds since the young and brave were living in the cave. Take a little hit before you. Take a little taste, time is here to waste. You take a little nip, and then you take a little trip. It's not the chance that you take, that's your big mistake. It's the chance that you miss, you shouldn't resist. Why take a little spank before you hit the tank? Take a little stroll before you hit the pole. Why don't you take a little hit before you quit? Did you dig that bass solo to toward the end? There's a bass solo. Got to have a bass solo. Wow. What an experience. What an experience. The Salon for Secular Humanists, Arch Democrats, and Free Thinkers. Listen, if I leave you with anything, I want to leave you with this. It's going to be okay. We've gotten through hard times before. I'm not just talking about in our lives, I'm talking about on this planet. Uh, it's going to be fine. It's not what it was, but maybe it never was. Got another song for you. Why not? Now, I might be wrong, but it sure seems to me the past ain't what it was and the future ain't what it used to be. Oh, everywhere I go, I hear people say, Man, you should have been here yesterday. You should have been here before the fall. Now it's the price of everything and the value of nothing at all. I could be wrong, but I think those days are gone past ain't what it was and the future won't be here long now we're all just the sons of the dharma bums waiting in the water of the infinite flow and every time you take a look there's another dead guy in your address book where have all the good ones gone why did they leave us here to carry on? I could be wrong. Everywhere I go, them that knows don't talk, them that talks don't know. If silence is the answer, what could the question be? I could be wrong. But that's how it seems to me. We watch as time passes. And then, so do we.
so do we. Thanks again. As we all know, well, let me just say this. For me, the upside or the downside, the potential good that can come from everything that's falling apart, is that we will have the opportunity to put it back together again and put it back together better. Tikkun olam, as we say, to heal a shattered world. And you know, it, it used to be we were looking for answers. I think now we're going to be satisfied with, with questions. Of course, I'm preaching to the choir here. Uh, but I want you to be forewarned about something. Two weeks ago, uh, I sent a book to somebody in, in Idaho. Now, of course, uh, I wanted it there quick in two days, so I, I paid for premium delivery, you know, priority mail, 12 bucks. Eight days later, I got a message from the post office that said, ah, it's on its way. It's now in Shreveport, Louisiana. Did I mention it's going to Idaho? And I live in Wisconsin. The package is now in Louisiana. All I'm saying is you don't want to be the last one off the Titanic. Vote now. Okay, last pitch for Smalls Live. Keep the club open. Keep the music playing. Keep the musicians working. It's not the frosting on the cake. It's the appetite for life. Donate. And, uh, hey, this was, <laughs> this was interesting. Uh, I, I, you know, I would so much rather be hanging out with all you people. You know, after the club, we always, you know, after the gig in the club, we always get together, we, we hang out, we have a drink, we go sit outside. Um, that's not going to happen this year, but it'll happen next year. And it'll be so much sweeter when it does. So, see you on the streets. Until then, hasta la victoria. One, two, one, two, three. Now we the people, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense and promote the general welfare and security, the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. Because we the people, we the people, we are the people, we the people. It ain't no lie if it's true, ain't no me, ain't no you, ain't no red, white, and blue, it's just people. Ain't no up, ain't no down, ain't no loss, ain't no found, ain't no bad side of town. It's just people, we the people. We come from the earth, we belong to the stars. We talk about church, but we hang out in the bars. Don't lose that connection to that cosmic direction, don't you ever. No.
in Ain't no lose, no win Ain't no better time to begin We're just people We the people Check this out Give me your tired, your poor Your huddled masses yearning to breathe free The wretched refuse of your teeming shore Send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed to me I lift my lamp beside the golden door For the people, we the people For the people, we the people